Okay, guys. Hey, I'm here with uh, Megan. How do you say your last name? Ahern. Ahern. Um, she is the person everybody looks up to here in Lincoln for how to do a proper house flip. Um, we're going to check out one of her ones that she just acquired and they're in the process of getting ready for market. And then I think we're going to go check out one that, that's uh, going on the market here really soon, right? Yep. yep. Okay, so it's a total mess right now. Um, we have people working in here. Um, originally, this was closed off to just a small doorway here to the kitchen. Um, so we usually try to open up our kitchen living room to be an open concept. Um, and then this beam will get wrapped with like a stain of wood. It really adds a lot of character. Um, new kitchen, obviously, um, this will be like an urbane bronze, like a dark um, brown gray, and then white quartz. Um, so we do everything, like each of our projects, fairly differently. Um, and we design it based off of like what we're keeping or just kind of the feel of the house. So since this has a brick exterior, we're gonna do like a really cool brick wallpaper to tie in the kitchen. Nice. Um, and do like kind of some darker industrial looking um, finishes on it. Megan Ahern, I own uh, Acorn Properties. We flip houses here in Lincoln, Nebraska. We've been doing it for about three years now. We moved to Lincoln specifically for real estate and we never actually planned on flipping. We wanted to come here for the rental market and buy a lot of rentals. But honestly, with the way that the market is right now and everything's just going so hot that it's harder to find rentals at a good price and it's really easy to flip right now. So we just kind of pivoted and started mostly flipping. Nice. Yeah. Um, okay. All of this will be white um, walls and whatnot, white trim. We got all new trim uh, baseboards throughout the house um, because it was just kind of beat up. And we like to go the extra mile on our projects. Do you always um, replace the, the trim uh, or is that something you, you kind of just... We kind of just go based off of how it looks. Like this house was fairly rough, so we wanted to do that. Um, down in the basement, I'll show you, we had to tear out like everything. So if we're replacing that much base and case down there, we might as well do the baseboards up here as well. Um, here's a bathroom. Um, so we are going to be doing a tile surround in there. Um, this room, we kind of reconfigured a little bit. So this had, um, this here was the closet that was accessible from that bathroom. Okay. And then the master closet went to about here. Okay. Um, but what we did was we took this corner that used to be master closet right here and made it into a bathroom because this originally did not have a shower. Okay. So it was just a half bath and we thought it would be a lot of value um, for the buyer if they had a shower in here. Um, and it had a closet here and a door here, which uh, you could walk into like the kitchen area or across the stairway and into the kitchen. So we closed off that, put the shower, got rid of that closet, and then expanded the bathroom this way so we could have a nice big vanity here, toilet, shower, all the things everybody wants to master the bathroom. Nice. Where did you get your initial cash to start? I guess, so buying buying rental properties, did you guys come here with a traditional job or? No, um, my husband was getting out of the military. Go He's a Marine. Marine, uh, okay. 12 years. Nice. And he got hurt, he got medically separated. Okay. So he got a separation bonus. So we had a lump of cash and we actually moved out here in um, an RV and just parked that travel trailer behind whatever property we were working on for about the first year to kind of cut our cost of living down nice. um, and just be able to put everything into our business and kind of go for broke. Nice. Awesome. All in. How do you find these properties? Do you Are, are you part of the wholesale process or is it usually just... We are. So we do a lot of marketing, um, off, off market type marketing. And um, so maybe we send out postcards, we do cold calls. Um, we have a, a large network, honestly, of people that know us, that know we do good work. And they a lot of times bring us deals, which is really nice. Um, our contractor sometimes brings us deals um, because they know what we do. And if maybe a contractor that we work with says, to one of his clients like hey this basement wall is going to be fifteen thousand dollars to rebuild and they say whoa i don't have the money for that maybe i just need to sell it and downsize he's like hey megan would probably buy it from you and he knows that he's going to get the work still on the basement 
and and then I get a property and it, it answers a problem for the seller. So right. Um, do you, do you have a website that uh, if somebody does have a situation like that in Lincoln that they can get a hold of you to show you what they have? Yeah, probably our best way is through Facebook. So facebook.com um, slash acorn huskers, like corn huskers with an A in front of it. Um, and so that's, yeah, all of our flips and rentals go up there first too, if you like that page. Nice. Um, and then this house actually we found through the MLS. So it was listed for $200,000 and I saw it pop up and was like, whoa, this needs like a full rehab and they have it listed at pretty much, you know, the ARV. Um, and so I kind of ignored it. And then a couple weeks later, it dropped $25,000. And I said, ooh, that's some motivation right there. What made you decide to go for, for flips rather than rentals? Uh, or did your first rental become a flip? We bought a few rentals in the first couple years and we flipped here and there just kind of to build up some cash. And we kind of hit a point where our debt to income ratios um, didn't allow us anymore to buy rentals on conventional loans. So we decided to kind of start flipping more to build up our cash and be able to show um, a profit in our business. The other part of it is that we were less than two years in business, so our tax returns didn't reflect you know, any profitability yet. So we're having just a hard time getting normal bank loans. Um, so we started flipping. And then that's also when the market's just going up and up. Um, so it just seemed like a good time to, to be Nice, flipping. so a little, bit of, a little bit of good luck and then also um, you kind of saw the potential. Um, do you stick with the same contractors uh, at each project? Or do you, you have multiple properties going on at once, right? Yeah, we have about five remodels going right now. Um, so I try to stick with the same guys. I absolutely love, love, love my son. Um, he's been with me for years. Um, it is hard when we're running like that many projects to be able to schedule them out and be able to wait for them. Um, but they do seem to kind of put me ahead a lot of times with other people because I'm kind of following. Um, and they do a really great job for me. So I think when you find a good contractor, just like stick with them and love on them, I think it, it turns out better. Do you do any of the, uh, the work yourself? Are you a tiler or? Painter. Yeah. Um, I used to, we used to do a lot of the work in the beginning, and then kind of as we've grown, if we're doing my project that was, uh, it wouldn't work for us to be doing the work. So some that people are going to obviously ask is how uh, how do you afford the uh, remodel portion of the of the uh, the home flip? So um, we got hard money for the purchase of the home, but starting out, we had to still have that lump sum to put into the remodel. Um, and we did it kind of a lot of different ways. Um, one time or a few times we've used 0% uh, interest on credit cards and you can do a balance transfer um, and balance transfer essentially the balance from your credit card into your checking account and then use that money um, to pay off uh, to pay for your contractors and your supplies and all that and then when you're done with the flip just pay back the credit card so you're paying zero percent interest during that time that's a really good option if you can be um stringent enough to actually pay back the debt when you're done with it um and then also we've done um things where we've borrowed that from private um people that maybe have like 30 or forty thousand that they want to lend um, and you could pay them like a hard money lending or private lending type fee um, to borrow their money for the rehab. Do you have any um, uh, any partners or is it just you and your husband? Uh, it's just me and my husband. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any particular reason why you've chosen not to do any partners? Everybody everybody always yeah. you know, d does these investing clubs but... We, we have actually partnered. I don't like long-term partnership, right? It feels like getting married. Um, we have done a little bit of partnering in the sense that like, we found a flip and we had a few different projects going on. Didn't really have all of the money for the rehab. And so we did like a 50-50 partnership where the other person brought in 50% of the rehab money. We brought 50%. We both were kind of hammering on it. And I think with 50-50 partnerships, your brain automatically goes in the beginning. That's fair. But then as you kind of go along through the couple months, you go, um, this is not fair. I'm here and he's not, or I put in this and he's in it. And so I, I just don't like it. It's messy. Um, we partner with people now 
that's like, hey, I'll give you X amount of dollars for the rehab and, and pay me X amount of percentage. And I feel like that's an easier partnership to swallow than that 50-50 kind of makes your brain go, wait, maybe this isn't actually It's a huge lesson learned there. Um, so you, you probably wouldn't partner with somebody again on a, on a future flip, right? Um, definitely not like that. Okay, yeah. awesome. I see you have an egress window here. So this is a finished bedroom in the end. Nice. Yep, so this is um, daylight windows. Those were already there. And so all around this basement had uh, like a very thin wood paneling with um, wallpaper over it. Right. And the only thing that was left was the wallpaper. Um, so when we were negotiating that, we told the listing agent that which she hadn't realized yet. And so I think we had a, a really good shot of drastically lowballing um, the listing price. Kind of a blessing and a curse because you were planning to replace the, the paneling anyway, right? Right, right. But you know, when you're, you obviously can't demo it while it's listed. Right. So you're looking at it, you know there's something wrong with it, but you don't know how far it's gone. You don't know if like the floor joists are all eaten up or structural wood or the framing um, so we kind of had to just beef up that repair number for, right. um, because we knew it was an unknown, we knew it could have blown up really easily. So, I mean, that's a huge lesson learned for, um, for people that are just getting started. Would you recommend this for a first time home flipper? Uh, if they walked into a house and they saw termite stuff, or would you say that takes some experience or? Um, I think it takes some experience and it, it takes some, um, like extra money. So on this, my budget is $70,000. So that's a lot of cash that you're gonna to need to put into a house. And if it blew up to $80,000 or to whatever, I have the money to kind of back that at this point. Whereas if that's your first flip and you go into it, every new flipper thinks that it's gonna be less than what it actually is. So if you walk in and you're like, oh, I think it's gonna be 50 grand and it ends up being 80 grand, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. You're gonna be halfway through your project running out of money um, and that's like a really bad place to be. So when you guys first started, um, what were your average repair costs for a house? Uh, what kind of projects did you take on? I I'm sure 90% of it was probably done by you and your husband, right? So you saved a lot of labor costs, but just to give us an idea of starting off, what, what would you say the average repair value of a house was? Re repair cost of a house was? Sure. So the first one that we bought was, we bought for 55 grand. It was a hundred year old house. I thought we were gonna need to put like 30 grand into it and it blew up to 55 grand budget. And that was with us doing a ton of the work ourselves. And it took six months, it took way longer than we thought. Um, so we learned that lesson kind of the hard way. Um, but, but after that one, after I learned what not to do, we kind of, try to stick to more cosmetic rehabs. So we're trying to stay like under 30 um, for our budgets. And I got to a point where I could pretty much hit it like within a thousand dollars, you know, my budget estimate as compared to what it was at the end. Um, okay, so first of all, our formula, we do it kind of weird. Um, we we kind of run our numbers two different ways. We say the most important thing is the after repair value. So we're gonna figure that out first. We think this house is gonna sell for, let's say 250, and then we times it by 0.94. And so what that does for us is it takes out the 5% commission, realtor commissions we're gonna pay, and about 1% on the closing cost that we're gonna pay. So neither of you guys are, are licensed realtors then? Um, my husband is, but we pay him. Oh, ah, okay. Nice, awesome. Um, so that's kind of two different entities. We kind of keep them separate. So um, then we subtract out our rehab costs and our money costs and our profit. And we wanna make $30,000 um, on a flip when we do it, uh, which seems like a lot, but if we go $10,000 over budget and we go $10,000 under our ARV, we're still you know, slightly profiting and it's still worth it to us. If you go and shoot for like 20 grand of profit, um, and then the crap hits the fan. It's just really not worth it. How, how do you calculate your ARV? I'm gonna I'm gonna get this answer from several different people. Um, obviously, wholesalers are gonna have the highest ARV. Yeah. Um, but for you, the uh, the the fixer upper, the person who's behind the project, how do you calculate your a ARV? Um, we look at comps. My husband is a realtor, so he can pull those comps and get actual market data. 
And then with how fast the market has been appreciating lately, we even call the listings that are pending because what we're seeing is like a month by month increase in value. So a lot of times what we think will be the ARV on the front side of the project, we know we can list it for more than that on the back side because um, the comps just aren't really keeping up. Uh, that's a really aggressive way of doing that. I honestly think as a new person, you shouldn't be. You should go with what the actually the market is saying, comps that you can actually support. Um, I think we've done this enough times now that we understand that we can we can usually get significantly more than what the comps say. Right. So um, our houses go usually like multiple offers, one day on market, um, and they'll go twenty thousand dollars over asking usually. Okay. Um, so uh, one example is we had a house that we saw, we pulled comps. The comp said 130. Um, I thought I can sell this for 150 when we're done. By the time we we're done, we listed it for 155 and got 175. So I think a lot of times we can pay more for a property than like a normal flipper um, because we know we can get more for it on the back end. So again, um, a good deal. Um, do, do you stick to a certain neighborhood? Are you North Lincoln only? Are you? Um, I, I see most of the people around here have their yards well maintained. I see that, you know, obviously you're doing a lot to improve the exterior of the property. Um, do you look for that when, when you're looking for a house or is it is it literally just the numbers or? Um, it really is just the numbers, but a lot of times there's certain pockets of neighborhoods where I know we can't get the ARV for. Um, so there's certain neighborhoods that I don't necessarily need to walk because I know right out the gate that the numbers probably aren't going to work. Um, if you know Lincoln well, uh, T-Town is kind of one of those for me um, because you can't get the ARVs there uh, high enough to support the big rehab that a 100-year-old house is going to need usually. Um, but not that those aren't good houses, they're just usually not good for high-end flips. Do you, um, do you usually have an age of the house that you stick with them? Um, in the beginning, I did everything. We did 100 year old houses um, and I think as you do those you kind of realize they are terrible to do and they just take so much time and so much money and it's like a lot of kind of MacGyvering stuff together to fit correctly because it's not like a standardized building sizes. Um, so we try to stay away from those now but we're on, under contract right now on a 100 year old house and it's going to be gorgeous. Um, so I'll do it as long as the numbers work out, but it's very, very rare. One more quick thing. Um, what is the most important part of the house for resale, in your opinion? Uh, definitely kitchens and bathrooms. Uh, I think women buy houses, honestly. Um, the men probably mostly afford it, but the women get to decide on the kitchens and bathrooms. I honestly don't even paint the garages usually. The guys don't usually care. Nice. All right, now to check out the one that's for sale if you want it. So this one actually is not for sale. I'm oh, that. okay. Um, we have listed and sold this one already and it closes tomorrow actually. Nice. So this one's already smashed up. <laughs> that's the Lincoln market right now, huh? Yeah. Well, it actually, it's very similar design to your last one. It is, and so it's interesting because I am now essentially making comps for myself. Nice. Um, when we pulled the comps for this house, um, we and other flippers in the market thought, okay, that's, you know, comp support two-thirds. Right. And uh, we were able to list it, and we ended up listing it for 260 and got 280 Nice. And then it didn't appraise, so it's gonna close for 275 now. Um, but now when we sell the other house, I know that this comp will support um, a 275 ARV. Right. Um, actually, that other house has one extra bedroom and very similar square footage. It would be very similar layout. Just a little different finishes. Continuing on with the Chip and Joanna Gaines look, huh? Yeah. Um, Chip I, laps in. I don't love it, honestly. Like, I'm not huge fan of it. I kind of tend towards the mid-century modern or like a little bit more weird, but um, if you pull Lincoln, um, 
people still love the white cabinets, the white walls, the, the butcher block, all of that. That's kind of like the most popular. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I did know. So you went um, you went white on, on all the walls. Just, yeah. just um, bare white or um, yeah, snow white? Yeah, actually um, alabaster okay. is the color. Um, so, it's like a very creamy white. Um, interesting. It's a low, egg, low gloss eggshell, um, so it cleans well. It also touches up well. Um, so it's really easy to flip that way. And then it's easy to decorate. So if you looked at our website or our Facebook page, you can see this thing just really looks so beautiful when it's staged. Um, I also do home staging, acorn home staging. Um, so it just really puts the finishing touches on it. Um, but it really draws that whole, like, right now it looks kind of boring, right? It's just white walls, whatever. Sure. But if you look at the pictures. I wouldn't say boring, it definitely, <laughs> definitely pops. <laughs> yeah, but, but there's not a lot to it. But when you, when you bring in your pops of color, when you bring in your couches and your, your design to it, it's greenery, it just makes it look like a really clean look. Um, but you can also customize it any which way you want. Nice. I see you went with low profile lighting type stuff with the exception of the kitchen. Um, not a huge fan of the recessed lighting or do you just, is this um, a style that you kinda, feel it's... I feel like it's easier maybe to just swap it to a, a new fixture than to do recessed lighting. Um, and these kind of just look modern other than like a right. boob light or something. Hey, I'm not the only one that calls it a boob light. <laughs> They're totally boob light. Oh, I, I want to take a real quick. Look at the backdrop. It almost looks like a metal, but it's actually a wallpaper. Yeah, it's neat. So I like to get, like I said, a little weird. Um, do a wallpaper, do some texture. Hey, I did that, Nietzsche. <laughs> well, I didn't do it on this house, but I mean, I did one like this. This is a new carpet that we tried out this time around. It kind of looks really rich. It's low profile. A lot of new builders. Where do you get your carpet? Um, from Cascade. Okay. Um, so a lot of new builds are using it, so I went with that, kind of got some cool texture, almost looks like lines. Right. Does this have a master bath too, or no? Um, it connects, that's the master, and so it, oops, it connects behind this door. Oh, nice, okay. No, I, I get the idea, yep. Is this a one bath, or does this have? So this is um, the only bath on this level, and it has a, one more bath down in the basement. So, we'll go so in Nebraska, basements are essential. People will not even look at a slab house, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> so I've noticed that a lot of houses that actually have the finish, oh, and then a walkout basement to boot. It is a walkout basement. Do you, do you refinish all your, your basements then, or? Um, so this was already drywalled in, and had a ceiling but it was weird and once we started kind of poking around down here we realized that it just put up like foam insulation not drywall and so it had all these holes and pock marks in it so we ripped down all the ceilings put in new ceilings um in the basement uh, throughout and then this was originally bathroom and laundry but it was kind of one of those i call them nebraska basements where it's just like Someone just plopped a toilet in a random spot and it's weird and so we just finished in all of this area and made it very legit and then um, this was not a bedroom previously. It was just like turned the corner of the basement. So we added this uh, wall in and we added a closet in here okay. to call that another ba uh, bedroom. So it ended up being a four bedroom and then a plus one non-conforming bedroom and two baths. Um, this also didn't have a shower down here, so that was the challenge, was to fit all of this stuff in a fairly small space. Oh. Um, this is what we were able to do with it. So you got a nice full-size shower, you got a toilet, you got your cute vanity, and you have your stackable washer and dryer, kind nice. of save space here. Um, and then HVAC behind there. Hey, I know that one. I had that one in my last float. Not the same color, though. This is awesome. I love it. Honestly, I like the lights. Yeah. Any advice on this one? Any lessons learned from this from this property? Um, man, I don't think so. I think sometimes you 
sometimes you have to get creative um, to add like a bathroom. I think that's money. If you're gonna make a house that has uh, five, essentially five bath, uh, five bedrooms, you're gonna have a buyer that has uh, probably a lot of kids, right? And so you need to think about who is your end buyer gonna be? They're gonna want two bathrooms. And so you need to get creative and figure out how to fit all of that into that space that you have. Um, for us, it was a matter like we had to remove a, a water softener because it was just taking up too much space in that mechanicals area. And we actually moved the water heater um, into this plus one's closet right here. Okay. Um, and put an electric water heater we wanted to do that. What was this project, how, how long did it take to go from the other house to this house? What was the remodeling timeline for you? To finish this project? Yep, from start to finish. Ooh. Probably for this one, um, it took about two months. We were able to finish like every 30 days for a while there, um, but because of supply issues and because um, they were having some issues with This project blew up a little bit too in that we needed to refinish um, the drywall the ceilings downstairs, which we weren't originally planning on doing. Um, so it just kind of elongated the timeline a little bit. Okay. All right, guys, thanks for watching the whole thing. Uh, if you want to learn more, go to acornhomestaging.com to see what else Megan uh, Ahern has. Uh, has done and how she can help you with your properties getting them ready for the market. Oh, and like and subscribe.